Whenever I talk to you, I go home energized. <laughs> <laughs> and I make stuff. Um, I think it's But who knows? I'll start this. Um, I'd like to introduce you to these guys. Um, Fulbright Penn Library really does encourage creativity and making and empowering entrepreneurs, people who want to do their own thing. Um, we have a team called EC Makes. Da -da, and we've been planning programs to introduce entrepreneurs and teach you maybe you can ask questions. Um, these two guys, this is Dante Cotton and Ronald James, and you, I think, already know some of these people. <laughs> <laughs> Dante, as I understand it, was born in Long Island and raised here. And even as a teen, you really liked fashion. You liked streetwear. And he went to high school classes on marketing and entrepreneurship, and you had to make a company, right? Right. And so he did. Um, and a few years later, it was your very own brand, debonairmaterial.com. And I even wrote down, do you know his definition of debonair? It's a lifestyle brand, not just streetwear clothing, but feeling confident, stylish, cultured, and fashionable. And it includes all kinds of parts of your life, sports, art, music, connecting other cultures, and inspiring other people to be debonair, right? Now, out of that came a podcast series with Ronald James. You guys, how long have you guys known each other? Oof. Uh, uh, over 10 years at this point. <laughs> yeah, quite, a, quite a while, quite a while at this point. And just listening to Ronald, you can tell he's got opportunities in lots of different ways. He's an actor, he's a artist, comedian. <coughs> I understand you're going to be in the first annual Baltimore Comedy Festival. Yeah, I got chosen for awesome. one of the venues. In September. Thank you. <laughs> so, they're going to tell us how they got started, and then we're going to have time for questions and answers. And I, I can't tell you how excited I am that you get to meet them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hello, James is Dante. Um, we have a podcast. Um, for those who don't know what a podcast is, it's basically you listen to the radio, right? You guys listen to the radio. Um, imagine like TV. You know how you have on demand? It's the same deal. So basically the audio is captured and put online so that you can listen to it later. We record it in advance and you can listen to it whenever you want. So it's not like terrestrial radio where you, you miss a song and you're like, ah, I gotta rewind it. You can listen to whatever you want. So that's what we do. We have a podcast and if you could explain what it is. And All right, so uh, I guess we can Oh yeah. go ahead and Talk about us. So this, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a 1080p high definition picture of us that we took last week. Um, I'm Dante Cotton. I am a graphic designer, creative director uh, for my brand Debonair Material, and uh, also co-host the podcast uh, Branded, obviously. And uh, Ronald, uh, what do you what do you consider yourself to be? Everything. But I think, that's, I think that's kind of what this is all about, right? So um, I think that a lot of the times you may have done something for a long time and you think that's solely what you are. So like for example, I did computers for a really long time. So in my heart, I was like, I'm just a computer guy. So one day I had the idea to just do whatever I wanted to do. And, and I know that sounds simple, but it's a, it's a really simple decision that you can make that can really help you. So like if you, somebody says you're funny. Somebody said I was funny one day. So I was like, I'm gonna do stand up. Somebody said my face is not ugly on camera. So I was like, let me just start being involved in acting. Like, so we're here to basically encourage you to do whatever you wanna do along the creative sort of field. And there's no limitations. You should never feel like that little doubt that you have in your head when you're like, ah, I don't, forget that. Do it, because that's what other people do, and they make millions of dollars doing it, too. Uh, and we happen to meet a couple of people that make quite a bit of money doing what they do for a living. And that's kind of what our podcast is, capturing these people that do these creative things for a living. So, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Man. Oh, next slide. Yeah. Cool. That's our logo. I don't know, I don't know if you guys, how you guys feel? Love it. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, Branded, uh, 
It's pretty much a, a podcast about inspiration, so kind of fits the theme of what tonight is, uh, Inspiration Night. And uh, so as far as inspiration, uh, we try to find a guest to tell their stories and hopefully inspire the people that listen and have them kind of give that message of, if I can do it, you can do it too. Um, I think that's really important as far as being a creative and going along that journey, finding the other people that are on that path that are going to help you push, push yourself and get to where you need to be and feel like you're not alone. I think that's really important because being a creative gets very lonely at times. You, you spend yourself in a confined space trying to hone your energy into to doing whatever you do. So finding other people in that, in that same space and going through the same process and hearing that they hit the same walls you do really helps you, you get along. And that's kind of uh, where, we, where we started at, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, so one of the biggest things too is like, it's, there's nothing wrong with seeing somebody doing something and saying, I could do this and possibly better. That's okay, that's how people start. I think that Michael, when Michael Jordan saw somebody playing basketball and he got, you know, what did he, he, he didn't even make varsity in high school, right? He probably saw somebody and was like, I could be better than that person. And it's not, that's not an insult to the person that they see, but there's something about being inspired by that stuff, right? So computers are your key. They can literally do anything if you want them to. They're not just looking at rumors about celebrities, right? You can, you can get recording programs to edit YouTube videos. You ever watch those YouTube videos where people are talking about movies? Or mm -hmm. Some people do that stuff on their iPhones, their Androids. You can do all that stuff everywhere. The technology is there. It's just figuring out how to use it for your benefit. So, uh, see. Yeah. And then the other thing we, we, we kind of focus on, like have them tell their, their stories about their trials and tribulations going through the process. Um, like a lot of people will tell about how they felt going through the process of, you know, being a creative, find, trying to find their path and just learning from their mistakes. I think that's really important. I think uh, our first guest, Jordan Jackson, uh, he used to work at Under Armour, um, actually just moved to Portland to work at Adidas. Uh, when he was working at Under Armour, he worked on the Pursuit collection that they just put out, like their lifestyle uh, fashion part of the, the, the brand that they do. Um, he designed everything for that collection. And uh, during his, his story, he, he talked about going to FIT and almost failing out. Like his, his, his professor sat him and another student down and, and told them that they weren't doing well. Like they, they weren't good at, at sewing the process. They, they had the creative energy, but they weren't doing well. So they weren't gonna make it. So he, he, could, he could have either just stopped at that point, come back home, called it a day, but he kept pushing, found a way to, to, to hone that energy and get really good at sewing. And obviously being a, a head designer for a collection at one of the largest brands in the world. So I think that's really important about, you know, what we do and getting those stories, getting those stories out there. Yeah. Um, so Dante goes to some of my comedy shows and he watches me fail all the time. So you, 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 could, you could have a thought, you're like, I'm gonna talk about how gassy I am on stage. And you might have a funny idea, right? You get up on stage and people don't like it sometimes. But that doesn't mean that that's it. That just means that that one time, that didn't go well. So what went wrong about it? You, you can analyze it. You can figure out what didn't work about it. That's the best part of doing stuff. Failing is the best thing that could ever happen. Because if everything went well, when things hit the ground, when things go bad, you wouldn't really know how to prepare, right? So. The failure to me is stopping. That's the failure. Giving up is the failure. If you stop, if you, if you hit a wall, that's the best thing that can happen. Because sometimes something might not look exactly the way you want it to, but it might be better than that. So like I, for example, I'll have a joke or an idea, and sometimes we'll come together and have ideas like, you know what, we should do this for this guest, right? We may have a, a set of questions we want to ask the guest. And the guests may give us something that we don't even expect sometimes. They may give us a story about, so for example, we had a, a, a gentleman on that was a DJ. He's a DJ, he toured with, um, so Pharrell used to be in a group, the Neptunes, right? Um, and he toured with Chad Hugo, who was Pharrell's production partner. And along the way, he met all these celebrities, right? We slipped into a celebrity story by mistake kind of talking about something else. Right. You know what I mean? So it's something really nice about the idea of failure 
and not being afraid of it because you're gonna fail. That's gonna that's built in. So. And then the, the other thing we kind of focus on is getting those success stories. Like you go through those failures, you go through those trials and tribulations, but you come out clean on the other end. You, you learn from everything that you, you've gone through and you get to a point where, where things finally start smoothing out. And we always try and ask our guests, what, what was that, that first experience like of having some success, success? And what was it like to, to, to feel those, those goals that you set for yourself finally being met and those life-changing experiences that you have? So somebody, uh, Jordan talked about seeing somebody wearing his shirt on the street for the first time, or, yeah. you know, things like that. And uh, our guest, D. Watkins, uh, he is an author. Um, he actually just got his third uh, book um, approved, so yeah. that, that'll that be coming out, I guess, sometime within the next uh, year or two. Um, he talked about going through the process of finding an agent. Uh, he was talking to a buddy of his that he went to school with, uh, asked him how many times he, he submitted his, his uh, books and writings to, to some agents, and he told him like eight to ten agents he submitted to, and he couldn't get an agent. He sat there, and D said he submitted 500 applications <laughs> to different agents right. and got ten responses, and half of them didn't really want to work with him. So it's, it's, the, it's that point that you just got to keep pushing, you got to keep going, you got to keep striving, and at some point, if you work hard enough, you will get to that point of success, and it's going to feel really gratifying. And those are the kind of stories we, we try to, to bring out of people. Yeah, it's important. Um, success um, doesn't always have to be huge. Sometimes you can count the small victories. Like, you know, um, we had a podcast one week, we had 10, 10 people that downloaded it, right? To me, that's amazing. Because that means that 10 people, 10 people outside of us, <laughs> listen to our voices? Not crazy that sounds? Can you imagine sitting in a room and talking to yourself, and then 10 people outside of that room are sharing in that experience, right? And that, that could mean anything. That could, that, could, that could be the difference between somebody like hearing about a story that's like, you know, it could be pivotal in somebody's day. It might not change your life, but it could change your day. You might be feeling bad. You're like, man, that was a funny story they had, or that was a funny episode, or something like that. It's, it's nice to have. Count the small victories. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, count yeah, the definitely. small victories. It's important. Because it, it, we got to a point where, like, we started out, we maybe got, what, 50 listens that first month that we yeah. had, and now we see days where we get 100, 150 downloads in a single day. So we're tripling a number that we did in a month in a single day. So that's that's what's really gratifying and we're seeing our numbers grow every month and we have a few thousand downloads from the time that we started what back in September. Yeah. So I think that's really exciting just to, to, to see people around the world that are listening to you. Like we, we have people yeah. in Europe that listen to the podcast and China and uh, all over the US. So just seeing people that are outside your immediate area listening to to things that you talk about is is a really good feeling. Yeah. Tell people what you do too. Every time, sell yourself. You're watching a P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. Uh, he's always talking about Ciroc. He's always talking about his brands, right? So if somebody's like, "Hey, how you doing?" You're like, "Hey, I have a podcast. Hey, I I make shirts. I make drinks. I have flower arrangements. I have food. Tell people because you you never know that stuff could spread to somebody else. Somebody may know a person that knows a person. It's it's something about kind of sharing your story." Whenever you can. Thank you for coming, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, tell your story whenever you can. And, and don't be rude. Like, don't say, somebody's like, I broke my ankle. And you're like, hey, and by the way, I have a, a thing I do. Be, be polite about it. But tell people your story. But yeah, I guess oh. we can go ahead and go into what debonair material is. So uh, the debonair material is kind of the, the overall thing that, that houses the podcast branded and we have some other things that are going on. So I found the debonair material back in, in 2012. Um, started off as just a t-shirt line, uh, but during that process I ended up designing shirts and hats and socks and sweatshirts and a lot of different products that, that, that people ended up enjoying and uh, going through that time I, I learned a lot, gained some experiences, 
uh, within that first, I think, year and a half, I was a featured brand on, on Store Envy. Um, then uh, Amazon also reached out to me, so I ended up having the products carried on Amazon, and, and things like really picked up for me, and I just kept building my resume, had some, some local stores. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with where the Walter Art Museum is. There's a store right across the street, um, Four Inch Shoes. They carry my products in there. They've been carrying it since pretty much I started the brand great store they carry uh some exclusive products pretty much like on the east coast so if you like to shop in dc or new york what they carry there more than likely you won't find in those places they try to get some exclusive products in that shop so it's, it's uh, a really good good place to, to have my products in, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of that and <laughs> a couple years ago we we did our uh, three-year anniversary there and uh had a uh, erotic liquor they are based out of i believe dc they sponsored the event with us and, you know, had some drinks for our guests that came out and had a live DJ come out and spend some music. So really just trying to create a, a community atmosphere around the brand and, you know, bring some people in to, to have them enjoy what we do. And uh, as far as, you know, debonair material, like I said, we do do apparel, accessories. We do have some men and women's pieces. Um, trying to develop the women's line and trying to bring an actual woman designer in to, to handle that more because obviously I'm a male so can't can't say what, what women like to wear all the time so <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a good to, for them to have their own voice so I also do uh, hats and and I started using a process called sublimation to dye socks so I can put pretty much anything on socks your face if you wanted it I've done you know uh, I think the most popular sock design I've done was like a, a paint drip, which is kind of based off of the logo that I designed for the brand. Um, everybody loves it. As soon as they see it, it's like the most unique thing that they have ever saw. They've blown away with it. Um, and then also, uh, going forward, the brand is going to have original content that we're going to be putting out to go along with it. And that's going to be under Debonair Material Media. So it's going to be audio stuff that we... May I have your attention, please? Boyville will be closing in 30 minutes at 8 o'clock. The video game systems will also be shut down at 8 o'clock. Thank you. All right, so now we know the video games are shutting down, we can get to business. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the original audio we'll be doing, uh, so that would include, like, podcasts, online radio shows at some point. So if we can find somebody that could DJ an online show, we'd be doing that and have it broadcast, and people could download and listen to it. Uh, really just trying to create a platform for, for people that are trying to do more creative things uh, and have everybody within the community centralize their audience so that audience can grow instead of people trying to build their, their audience individually, which is really hard for creatives. And you kind of are stuck in between, do I find a company that can, can house my idea? Do they even like my idea? Or do I do it on my own and nobody pays attention to what I do? So if we can create a platform where we can build a community of creatives, that's kind of the idea behind it. And we'll also do it on, on the visual uh, front as well. So uh, Ron does some, some acting and he knows some people. So we may do like some short films with people, find some people to direct like music videos and get into some web series and have people, you know, showcase their talents and not have to worry about trying to find a traditional route to what they do because things are really changing in today's world. And I think it's really po important to adapt with the times and, and find ways to do what you love and not try to follow the, the old old paths of what's, what's been going on. And uh, as far as the inspiration for the podcast, um, Ron and I, we were talking for, for months before we even started, right? right, right. Like we, we sat down and uh, he and I, we listened to a lot of a lot of podcasts and I had a conversation with him. I was like, they, there aren't a lot of podcasts for creatives that, that talk about, you know, their brand. I was trying to find a lot of podcasts that talked about fashion because that's what I was doing. I was trying to find, you know, different stories of people that do what I did and listen to how they made it. And I only found, you know, maybe like two or three episodes within a 50 episode podcast or something like that from somebody that I knew that was designing or had their own label. And their stories like really inspired me. Like uh, John Buscemi, uh, he owns a shoe line now. He started out at, I believe, DC Shoes. Um, so he was living in New York, moved out to LA. He drove his car out there, was pretty much homeless, got down to his last week before he had to move home. His friend got him an interview out there. He didn't know how to do a resume. So he put 
his picture of his, his shoe wall since he was in, uh, interviewing for DC. They were looking for somebody to, to handle like their lifestyle stuff. Took a picture in front of his shoe wall uh, and put like uh, John Buscemi, sneaker collector, overall nice guy, and it was just his picture on there and that was his resume. And that's what actually got him the job. And then from there he started you know, working at Gourmet and got his own you know, shoe company and told his story about how, you know, his up and downs, and he almost moved back home. But his last week out there, he was living in his car, uh, had everything packed up. The, the guy that eventually offered him the position took him out to lunch that day. He didn't know he was going to get the position. So, you know, they were sitting there kind of having a conversation, and he got really frustrated. He was like, you know what? I really have all my stuff in the car. I'm about to go back home. If I'm not getting this job, just let me know now, and I can go. He, and he sat there and told him, he's like, man, relax. You had the job for a week now. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, those, those type of moments, like, you get really frustrated, but something happens and right. everything else ends up working out for you. So those were the kind of stories that we, we kind of wanted to, to tell. And as far as, you know, other podcasts, we went to listen to that, their format, their length, what outlets they put them on, and kind of constructed our podcast around that. Like, even if you listen to when we first started, we had a general idea of our structure, but we changed some things. Like sometimes we would record the intro after our guest, uh, after we talked to our guests and kind of summarize what we did. But we realized that didn't really go it'll, as... <laughs> it'll, always, it'll always change. That's the thing. Your idea will always change forms. Um, to, to kind of circle back about the inspiration, um, there's something about uh, just life that can give you inspiration. So like... Um, I think the most important thing in the world is having something outside of your job that you do. Something that you can call your own. Something outside of money. At first, if you want to turn it into something money related, something outside of work that you hold dear to you, that you value. You know? um, for example, um, I find time to watch movies. I also have a movie podcast. I have two podcasts kind of going at the same time. I love movies, so I turned that into a podcast. I love talking about uh, things with Dante. It's important that you feel like your voice is important because your voice is important. Whether you know that or not, I'm here to tell you that it is. Think about it. I, I, I mean, it's, it's almost like you ever watch a commentator on TV and you're like, that person isn't that good. Because <laughs> you can do that. You can do it. You can, you can do anything you want to do. I know that sounds crazy. And it, you might not be able to be a rocket scientist or something like that. You might not be designing rockets or something like that. But you can do almost anything. Well, let me, you can do almost anything you want, especially if it's something that's tangible. Most things are tangible now, right? The Internet has made it so that people across the world you can contact. So say if um, we had uh, the creator of Mess in a Bottle. So Mess in a Bottle is a t-shirt line that Kalila, a, a friend of mine, created um, where she just puts inspirational messages on t-shirts, right? So it started as that. She quit her job at Under Armour, and now she does that for a living. Um, she's had, I don't know if you ever heard of the show Insecure. Um, she's had cast members from that wearing her t-shirts. Um, she's had people, athletes. People from reality TV shows that love her inspirational sort of t-shirts. And what's neat about it is she has some kind of staple messages, but she has like current messages too. So like if there's some slang that's happening, she has t-shirts for that. She puts it out. It's actually all packaged in a bottle, which is really cool, mess in a bottle. And she distributes them like that. So seeing her journey, she was also on that... She was, a, well, she was on a couple of shows, actually. Uh, she <laughs> was recently went on Shark Take. I don't know if it, her episode aired yet, but, you know, she posted it on her Instagram, so saw that on her timeline. And it was another show that Mark Cuban was on. She got to speak to Mark Cuban during that. So, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And did we talk about how we get guests? So I think, so, I think we'll, we'll get into that. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a process yeah, within itself. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing that inspired the podcast uh, was a program called Streetwear Master that I did last year. So that was a four-month uh, master class that I got accepted into. It was 400 brands in the, around the world that got accepted for it. Um, so I got to learn from 
a lot of the top creatives within the, the, the streetwear community. Virgil Abloh of, of Off-White, not sure if you guys are familiar with who he is, but he works really closely with Kanye. He does a lot of his designs with him. Um, Off-White, you'll see it on pretty much every athlete or you know popular celebrity, they'll wear it. It's pretty much kind of like the, the crossing walk that you see, the, the yellow diagonal uh, pattern. He uses that on his clothing, so you'll see that as probably which you'll recognize, you might not see the name or anything, but that is his stuff. Um, and I really learned about the technical side a lot more than I already did as far as starting production from scratch, like putting a what is called a tech pack together, so making all the me measurements for your shirt that nobody else has, so it's your brand shirt and nobody else has that pattern for it. Um, learned about just how they got through their struggles and you know I was able to message and contact and speak to those those top people that are in the field like Fat Sharif he's one of the best uh, production people that has worked from o Obey and uh, put jeans together and he really knows fabrics and how to to get whatever your 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 idea for your product is done his his I his knowledge of sewing and all that, I was able to you know, speak to him about that directly. Leah McSweeney, not sure if you guys are familiar with Married to the Mob, she runs that brand. We were able to speak to her as well. Um, she also does a podcast, um, Improper Etiquette is yeah. the name of it. And uh, Haas Nabadi, they're one of like the most popular streetwear uh, magazine, online magazines. So we were able to talk to like the editor in chiefs from those magazines and some other popular ones in the industry. And uh, I really just tried to soak in everything and going through that process, they really challenged us and gave us some tasks to, to come up with. And one of them was to do something that's not within that streetwear realm, but still represents your brand. So that's what I talked to Ron about because we had the idea floating around already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided that we were really going to do that podcast and I submitted it for, you know, the streetwear program and here we are six months later. Oh boy, challenges. <laughs> <laughs> challenges. It's definitely not been all kickwalks <laughs> up to this point. Uh, so I, what, around like episode five or six, I had my mic break on me. So if you listen to those episodes around those times for about two or three episodes, I sound really distorted because my mic sounds like he's up. across the street, basically. I sound like I'm in front of a mic. And he sounds like he's across the street. But we make it work, right? We were That's just doing important. everything we could to, to mask it until my new mic came in right, and we right. replaced it. We also went through uh, some software changes, right? We yeah. tried you know, to use some different software to see how it worked because we didn't like how our first few episodes were sounding. So we tried to figure out what we could do to just step that quality up because you know people do want to have something good to listen to. Yeah. Uh, I think it was your girlfriend that was listening to it, right? And she was listening yeah, to it. Yeah, like so she listen to it in her car. So that's that's my gauge of quality, right? My um, whether it's stand up or acting or anything, my girlfriend listens to something, watches something. She's like, you know what? You could, <laughs> and that's that's. What I mean by that is like, have someone close to you that can gauge your quality without being, you know, too hurtful or too just constructive. Have somebody in your circle that you can talk to because he and I always talk about the process. It's it's very important. It's good to you know you start. So okay, so I give you an example. When you start something, it should never look the same at the end. It should never do it. That means that there's no quality control. Because nothing you do is going to be perfect the first time, you know? You got to chip at it. It changes forms. Like I said, what you start off in the, the first stage is not going to, how it's going to look in the second stage. And we're always evolving. We're always coming yeah. up with ideas. We have segments. We have. So one of the things that we came up with during the course of the process is giving our guests a playlist. So. We, we interview people, we get this information, but I thought it would be really cool if you figured out what this person's listening to on top of that. What is this, what's in this person's head? Are they listening to Migos? Are they listening to Luther Vandross? What are they listening to? So we, on top of our podcast, we have a companion piece where we have a playlist of what the person likes. So it gives you a deeper idea of who that person is.
and you know they everyone that we we bring it up to at first they're a little shocked because they think they have to come up with the list on spot but we're like no you can you know submit it before we put the episode out so they relax at that point and then they get really excited about it because you know it's, it really gives an insight to to who they are and how they they motivate themselves and what they listen to and more of you know their thought process and you can tell a lot about a person about what they listen to so yeah. i think that's that was something that we really came out with and then uh another challenging uh issue that we came across was editing the episodes Oof. <laughs> time time and content so uh, one of the issues we had was just the length because sometimes you you know you, you have like you talk at home you can talk to somebody for three hours but nobody's going to listen to three hours of talk that's that's just not a thing unless you're driving somewhere right so we had to figure that out, the length of time. We try to keep it between an hour and an hour and a half, tops, hour and a half, tops. Right. But sometimes that's what we shoot for. But then then there's an the issue of people's comfort, right? So people are trusting you in the in the space, right? Um, they're talking about sometimes very personal things, and you have to make the decision kind of ahead of time. Are you going to compromise the integrity of what it is that you do? Because sometimes you can find out, we found out some pretty crazy things about some celebrities. Yeah. And we were like, should we put this out? Because this might, this could mess up this person's money. You know what I mean? Like right. people share very intimate things when you create a comfortable space. I, I've noticed that, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, within the first 10, 15 minutes of our podcast, they tend to give us something really personal. You never know what people are going to say. And you have to figure out, <laughs> if that's going to stay on the podcast, if there's something you want to keep, or if you want to keep the trust of your guest and, and just put it out, you know, with, with a couple of things edited out. So that's, that's something we've dealt with. So that's another thing you have to deal with, too. So as you're making your things, no matter what it is, um, are you exploiting? <laughs> are you making signs fall? Are you exploiting whatever it is that you're doing, or are you paying tribute to it? Are you, are you um, helping, the, helping the art? Are you pushing it forward? Because that's important, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, and then uh, to the point that, that you wanted to discuss earlier, getting our guest on, that was another, another challenge. Getting our guest, yeah. Uh, um, so some of the things that we ran into, some of the guests you know, traveled to, to come and sit down with this. Um, one of our guests, I was trying to get him on. He was really excited about doing it. And like come Friday, Saturday, because we, we normally record on Sundays. I'm trying to get in contact with him, trying to get in contact with him. And uh, I go on Instagram and see he's in San Francisco working with Steph Curry on a project. So <laughs> obviously he's not going to make it back in time for the podcast. Right, right. Uh, and then uh, holidays, we, we've been trying to figure out how to work how to work that out. Still, you can't you can't work around holidays. It just happens. Some people have like, all right, yeah, yeah. going all the way down. It might be somebody's birthday, and some people celebrate their birthday for a month. Well, uh, <laughs> that's just how it is. Jamila and Pierre, that was actually their their anniversary that they sat down with. Right. right. So we got a man. Very recently, I, I think one of our better episodes. Um, we got Jamila and Pierre Benu. I don't know if you've heard of these guys, but they own Oyen Handmade, which is a local uh, skincare line that's international at this point. They're selling at Target. They have. <laughs> they have. Uh, Too late. So, and, 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 and something very recent happened where uh, there was, they also deal with natural hair. So that's a new thing, right? Natural hair is not a new thing, but the business of natural hair has become a very big thing lately, right? And a company that shall remain nameless made a misstep. In that misstep, it was some cultural a lack of consideration, I'll say that. And as a result of that, people pointed to Oyen as an alternative to this sort of lack of consideration for, to be completely honest, black people. Um, so we've talked to them about how that affected their business after that happened. To have somebody put out a tweet that can push 10,000 people to their business like that. So this, that's, it's, it's really interesting the things we stumble upon as we, as we do these podcasts, so. Yeah, yeah. and then, uh, Going through the process as well, we we really learned the importance of following up with people, checking in, and making sure they're still going to be able to. <laughs> I'm super hard on him about that. Yeah, so you know, uh, 
gets to, to Friday and Saturday, they might have forgot yeah. something comes up. You know, we have to adjust the schedule or something like that. But that's really crucial to having a guest based podcast anyway. So, you know, if it was just us two, we could always make the date. But when we're trying to get guests and we were, we're really particular about who we bring on, that's yeah, the other yeah. thing. So, yeah. so you, you have to ask if you have anybody, if you invite anybody to any place and you're not paying them for it, you have to ask them at least 10 times. I, I'm serious. Like, hey, how you doing? You still coming? Hey, what's up? Hope your holiday's going well. Are you coming tomorrow? You know, you got to keep asking. You got to keep asking. Which I'm super persistent. But that also comes from having situations where I've invited people to public things where I was like, this person's coming, and then them not coming and me having to substitute for a person that people were expecting to come. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're also going to give you guys a few tips that we've you know learned and we kind of discussed going back and forth and things that really help us continue to be creatives and make a good podcast and just make good good products and everything that we do. Um, one of those things is keeping a strong circle. That's It's really important. Ron and I, we constantly bounce ideas off each other. We go back and forth. We kind of butt heads on a few things. We figure some things out, but just having that, that communication and, and being genuine with each other, that's the only way to make things better. If you, if you have somebody within your circle or a few people within your circle that you can do that with, it's really going to make what you do a lot stronger. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, nothing should feel super comfortable all the time. There's something about what you're doing is new territory, right? It's scary. It's always going to be scary. It's never not going to be scary. It, it'll be more comfortable. So um, I have a friend that's thinking about creating pies, right? Like selling pies. And there's something about, so you're taking this thing that you do at home for your friends, right? And then you're taking it outside of the house and giving it to people who will give you criticism openly. Oh, you got to develop some tough skin because you will hear people will tell you, oh, it's too long. I, I was about to fall asleep. It was boring. How come you couldn't get them to yell about this thing? You know, we, we hear it all. We, we get these weird criticisms <laughs> and you just have to take it in because that's what happens. Once you put something outside of your house. You're going to hear whatever somebody has in their head that they don't think is a mean thing <laughs> that to you, because it's yours, is going to feel crazy, honestly. Right. So. Then the other thing that's really important is, is networking. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron has this thing where he, he tries to go into a room that he knows nobody in, and he'll pick you know, however many people out and say, I'm going to learn something about this, this, this person that's in that room. Super important. You, you have to talk to people. No matter what it is that you do creatively, you got to talk to people. Have your attention, please. Story of the will be closed in 10 minutes at 8 o'clock. Cool. The video game systems will also be shut down at 8 o'clock. Thank you. In case y'all wanted to play Pac-Man or something. <laughs> but yeah, there's something about, um, yeah, keeping a strong network. Um, I still talk to people that I've kind of been passing talk to 10 years ago. I keep, I keep in contact with people, kind of, you know, Hello, how you doing? Happy birthday. Keep up with people. I'm not saying talk to them every day. Just let people know that you care about them. I know that sounds weird for a network, but it is network. A synonym for network is friendship. You know what I mean? It's a right. network of relationships. Keep them, honor them, and they will help you. I'm not saying be nice to somebody for the benefit of being helped, but I'm telling you it will benefit you. Um, so that's yeah, and then uh, the other thing, uh, push each other. Those people that you have in your circle, make sure that they're they're striving to do better. Make sure you're striving to do better. Make sure that they're helping you be more creative and make a better product or or whatever you do. Just make sure you're getting better at it. And uh, Ron and I, we do that constantly. He shares jokes with me. We go back and forth. I show him shirt designs. I've done that since I've started, and we really help each other just get better at what we do. And even with the podcast, we talk about what we need to sharpen up on. Do we need to cut some time down? Do we need to stretch some things out? So, you know, it's really important to, to bounce ideas off of each other. This is super important. Push each other. Say when If you're feeling it, say it. I mean, no matter what it is sometimes. And uh, also, you know, fight through those struggles that you have. Uh, a lot of people say can't do that which 
is the wrong way to think about it. You got to change that, change that can't to a can. Uh, you know, Ron and I, you know, we talk a lot and try to figure out some things that we want to do and we go about a way to figure out how to get it done. We don't look at those roadblocks. We say we want to start doing video for our podcast. Mm. Uh, what if we don't have a camera? We can't do that. That's not how we want to look at it. We're going to figure out how we're going to get it recorded. Do we know somebody with a camera? Do we know somebody that does video? Yeah. Somebody that can edit it for us? We go about a way to, to figure out how to get, get it done. Um, yeah, I think if, if you can't come up with a solution, you're thinking about it wrong. That's all it is. It's not that it's, it's never going to happen. You're literally thinking about it wrong. Sometimes you have to um, give, give people an idea of what you're doing, and sometimes you might get some ideas that you may never have ever thought of. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the next thing, who cares? Who cares about what you're doing? Who cares about, you know, being a creative? I still have a day job, so I, this guy came in, and we were sitting there having a conversation about politics, and I brought up that art budgets are being cut. And he's kind of like, who cares about art? What, what, what important is art? And art is really important to society. It, it's what helps push cultures forward. It helps start some revolutions. Art gets banned because it's, it's so powerful. If you go through history and see... Uh, Art during you know Christian eras that they banned certain types of art because it, it spoke to the people and there was a message in it. So find that passion. Don't get settled on who cares about what I do. Uh, find those people that do care. Target those people. Grow those. Grow, grow with those people, and your 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 work will get better. It'll show, and more people will start paying attention to to what you do. Yeah, enthusiasm is contagious. Um, I tell people that all the time. If you could talk to me about a piece of paper, but if you seem happy about that piece of paper, I want to learn about that piece of paper. Tell me about that piece of paper. Why is that piece of paper so important? And I carry that enthusiasm about everything, from water to what I eat to everything. I am excited about everything. It's not faking it. It is a genuine love because your life is very precious, right? Um, it's important to realize that every moment, everything you do is important. Very important. And don't ever lose that enthusiasm. You might be tired, still have that enthusiasm. It might not be quite as energetic as it was <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, as it will be at 11 p.m., but still have some enthusiasm. It, it, it spreads, I'm telling you. So, yeah. And then uh, the other thing is finding balance. So, like I said, I still work at a day job. Ron, he's Same. getting to start a new job. So it's, it's really important to, to find a balance between that, that work life and that creative life that you have and that personal life. And, you know, making sure you're, you're getting things done on time, making sure you're not slacking off on your own personal project because doing something that you, you're not really passionate about or it takes away from what you're really passionate about is really draining. So trying to transition into that, to that mindset that I have to get something done is really hard. So, uh, you know, make a schedule for yourself, plan things out ahead of time, try to work on things, you know, a week in advance or something like that. Don't try and get it down to the last minute and try and get something done because it'll show. It'll show in your work. It'll, it'll you know, you'll make a mistake that you normally don't make. Uh, make sure you have a, you know, a clear headspace. Meditate or do whatever you do to, to, to feel relaxed and your work will in, improve. Right. Like I said, always have something outside of work. Always have something that you treasure that's not related to a paycheck, something you can call your own. Something that no matter where you are in the world, you can do. You know, that's really important. So, yeah. And then uh, the other important thing to do is use your resources. So libraries, they really helped me during, during you know, my creative process. Uh, the Owens Mills Library, when they opened up, they have some private rooms. Uh, you can reserve them. Uh, I've held some meetings in there and sat down, and they have whiteboards. You can draw some things out. You can sit there and have an intimate space that you can share ideas and nobody's really you know able to invade what you do and you can hash some things out and it, that really helped me during my creative process and they also do like movie nights and uh when we, we, we sat down what they say they have like a, a beatboxing night i believe <laughs> yeah. so you know they have yeah. some programs that that you can go to and find what you do and it'll help you move move forward um i always try to find a resource I'm always thinking about things that could benefit me, right? So um, if there's a friend of a friend of a friend uh, that does something, 
talk to that person. I know it sounds weird, but like as a you know, it happens. Sometimes I was trying to decide on what college I wanted to go to, and um, I hadn't talked to my cousin that used to babysit me when I was a kid. And I was like, hey, I'm thinking about going to Towson University. How did you like it? And she was like, it was cool. You're probably not going to have as much fun as you would at another college, but you'll get some audio background. And I was like, I want that. So through my cousin who babysat me 15 years ago, I found out about how somebody's experience was, and that helped me. So, yeah. yeah. Then, uh, YouTube, it's, it's, Ron talked about it earlier, just finding video resources or books online, pretty much anything online, it'll help you in your process, watching other people do it. You'll learn some techniques that you, you might not know before, or you know things like that. I use YouTube all the time to figure out stuff that I don't know, and it really helps me speed up what I do. Instead of trying to figure out the long way to do it, I learn the precise way to do things. Uh, fix a car, you? you can learn how to fix a car. <laughs> <laughs> You can learn how to dance. I mean, literally, YouTube shows you everything that you need if you want to. It can teach you how to use Photoshop if you don't know how to use Photoshop. Right. And people, people will answer questions, too. You can actually put comments in there, and people will respond. So it is an interactive world with people all over the world. So consider the idea that YouTube is a very powerful resource for all of this stuff. So if you have an idea in your head, you're like, man, I want to become a barber. People have tutorials on how to give shape ups. Think about it. So, yeah, and then uh, friends and family. That's that's really important as as a resource. Reaching out to them, you know, they'll be the first ones that'll give you some feedback, be honest with you, help you out. May I have your attention, please? The video games will be shut down now. Storyville is now closed. The library will close at nine o'clock. Thank you. So guess we won't be getting any games of Pac-Man after this. <laughs> Done. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, family, reaching out to them, getting feedback from them. If, you, if you're, you're short on something, maybe they can help you out, supply you with something. Maybe they know somebody that can help you out. A lot of the people that we bring on our podcast are our friends. So, you know, people that we've met over the years, they, they're willing to sit down and talk with us and talk about their experience. So that's, that's been helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically everybody is a friend of a friend of a friend. And that's kind of cool because you can find out some really cool <laughs> stuff through that. And then uh, what's next as far as what we do? Uh, touched on it a little bit, Baltimore Comedy Festival. Oh, my goodness. Um, if you want to get into that. Oh, yeah. So um, one of the many things I do is I like to tell jokes on stage and embarrass myself. It's fun. Um, it's incredible. It's a rush. It's nerve-wracking, but it's really fun. Um, so I started four or five years ago. Um, my cousin did stand up about a year or two before me, and uh, he was one of those people that I always joked around with. Like, we'd always joke around. And he thought that since he could do it, that I could do it. And he encouraged me constantly. It took a year for me to do it. I got up on stage. I should not have done this. I invited 50 people, and around 70 people came. So it was packed in a bar, and I had they told me I had to do five minutes. I had about three minutes of material. Um, talked about farts a lot. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked, it worked. I, I, I had a bug and um, now I, I do it minimum three times a week. Um, I've gotten paid. I'm doing the Baltimore Comedy Festival that's coming up. My friend Ivan founded that. Um, so that's, what is that? So, oh, 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 I got that information. Get out of here. <laughs> so, um, BaltimoreComedyFest.com, you can see there's 10 venues. It's going to be incredible. It's the first of its kind in the city. There's some incredibly funny people. There's going to be people from possibly, supposedly, <laughs> some people from Wild and Out are coming. Um, Jordan Rock, Chris Rock's brother, little brother, is going to be there. I'm going to be there. That counts for something. <laughs> Um, and it's going to be from September 1st through the 4th. Uh, it's going to be incredible. So It's, it's 10 venues. Most of the, the events are going to be free, so you can come out. They're all... Uh, Within walking distance. Yeah, walking other. distance. Yeah. They're, you know, I believe, light rail accessible. Of each other. So, like, if... It's going to be... Um, auto, you know where Auto Bar is? 
No. Google it. What's that here? Um, it's like, near, you know where Charles Village is? Oh, absolutely. Kind of around there. Absolutely. Yeah. So around Charles Village. Yeah. So it starts there and kind of works its way down um, uh, a couple venues around there. So it's yeah. very easy, very, very bus accessible. Yep. Uber, Uber accessible especially. <laughs> if you don't feel like walking. I'm sorry? Someone's going to use Uber. It's right in the circle of everything. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I like I like this lady. Let's clap for her. She's very <laughs> You should you know you, you should be able to speak. I, I appreciate that. Yes, but she's right, absolutely. If you if you want to walk, you can walk. It's be, and it's gonna be nice. It's yeah. gonna be nice. So um, ten venues, they're all in that same strip. It's free. Uh, Ivan actually offered us a spot to do a, a live show there, so we're gonna try and you know work that out if we can. We may be doing that. There is a map on their website already. If you want to see where all the venues are, you can look it up. Um, and then they'll be announcing who's coming and the dates of and times. Um, I believe within the week, right? Yeah, yeah. So, they're all gonna you know, get announced. Um, Make sure you check out BaltimoreComedyFest.com and you'll have all that information for you. And as far as uh, what I'm doing, um, there's a thing called Penn Soul Academy. It's in uh, Portland, Oregon. So next week I'll be flying out there. Um, so what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of this, man. It's uh, one of the, the top footwear design schools in the world. Um, they only take like 4% of their applicants I applied and you know they accepted me for their one week program I'll be studying uh, color and material design so the finishing of shoes so the, the different types of leathers and all that that goes into a shoe I'll be learning that process and you know I'll be able to bring that information home and you know hopefully put it towards you know what I do and Ron and I we've always loved shoes so he knows like from, from the time that I've met him this is this is something that you know I'm excited about and yeah. I'm really looking forward to doing and you know, that's, that's what's next for me. And then also, I'm um, going to be having a, a feature on ABC. They reached out to me. So that, uh, I'll be doing something with them within, uh, I guess, the next month or so. When I come back home, uh, I'll be sitting down and, you know, I'll be on your local news. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a small feat. That's, that's pretty amazing. So one thing I tell them all the time is we, we don't push each other enough. We don't encourage each other enough. Everything that he does, I celebrate. You hear me? Everything, which you should do for your friends. So, like, even if they're like, man, I got, I got a new pair of shoes. You were looking for those new pair of shoes? Congratulations. You know what I mean? Celebrate everything because it's important. Like I said, these moments are very important. So whatever it is that you're pursuing, encourage that friend along the way. The small things make all the difference in the world because when they make it, you don't want to be one of those people like, oh, man, I didn't think he was going to make it, so <laughs> I'm a hater. <laughs> so it's important. Cool, cool. But yeah, I think that's you know the end of our presentation. We do uh, have time to do some Q&A. If guys, if you have any questions that you want to ask or, you know, the floor is hey, open. Anybody, wanna, anybody have any ideas of some stuff that they want to do, that they want to share? I know it's like kind of... Anybody want to do? Anybody have any ideas of some stuff you want to do? Come on, it, it, I, what do you okay. want to do? First and foremost, what is your name? My name is Stacy, and I have a um, a mentoring business, expressions mentoring consulting. So I've done. I was a guest co-host on a podcast um, a year ago. Okay. And okay. One of the hosts was here in Baltimore, and the other host was in Florida. Oh wow. So this is more like a radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I did a feature. I did. I did the mental health segment. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually work in the mental health field. So one of my desires is to take mental health, and I, I work with youth, six mm -hmm. to twenty-one. Um, so I'm looking to, without spending so much of my time doing something like this, but a way to kind of get it out there as far as mental health. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, I've done the, the podcast before, and it was very enjoyable, but it was difficult for the two to operate out of two different states right, right, and right. come together. But when it first started out, it was maybe just a few people, and it grew. So oh, wow. I did like that. Um, unfortunately, I can't do something like that by myself. Right, right. I understand. Um, with everything I have going on. So with that being said, um, do you have any other suggestions as far as 
me trying to get my information out there. I'm also having a mental health expo mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. um, it is a free event um, for the community. Um, but I just want to be able to get it out there even more without having to set up something like this for myself. Right. Um, the first thing that comes to my head is maybe YouTube. Because YouTube is free. Mm -hmm. You can do it on your phone. Because with that, the newest Androids, the newer Androids in the last like five, six years, they all record in HD. So if you have something static, you have something you can put up, start there. Record a couple videos, talk, have some, some points you want to hit on. You can even, some of those things have built in, like you can put title screens and stuff like that on some of those apps. So I'd say come up with an idea, figure out your talking points, make it, make it short. I mean, it's, don't, you know, see how you feel about it at first, put it up on YouTube. Then you can link it everywhere. You can, you can have it on your Facebook. You can text it to people. You can have it on your Instagram. You can have a, a link to your YouTube channel. Make it as simple as possible so that people can get to it. So I, that's my suggestion. That's what comes to my head first. Okay. No yeah, problem. and I would also say like uh, search online to see if there are like some local groups that you can get into. And Facebook is a good resource as far as groups that, that have some, some interest groups. Um, I know uh, there are some networking events that go on locally. Um, you can find those and try and find some people that can help you out or, you know, have some similar interests. So that would be something that you, you can do as well. Um, Eventbrite, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they have like a lot of listings as far as, you know, free events and stuff like that. That's a good place for you, for you to check. Well, I actually am um, on social media, mainly Facebook. Um, I do network with a lot of people. Oh, wow. I have no problem with networking. Yeah, yeah. That's actually how my event for October is actually coming together so fast. It's actually going a little bit faster than what I thought it was going to go. That's <laughs> so good. I do a lot of networking um, through media. Um, a friend of mine actually has her own business where she actually has people coming together. Yeah. Um, she has like she does live on every Tuesday. Oh, um, okay. To, yeah, to bring people. I mean, all over. It's not just in mm. Maryland, but all over. Um, to bring people together, and I've met so many people. And I've had just today, I've had so many people reach out to me like, whatever you need, yeah, you man. know. So, so I am a part of the networking. Good. Why don't you Facebook community. live your event in October? I mean, that's. Um, that's not yeah. a bad idea. It's not. I mean, I would love to do it. Yeah. I would love to do that. Um, What's stopping you? Like I said, it's nothing stopping you. No, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying no, to, I'm, I'm just asking. No, it's stopping me, but like I said, it's going, this is my first big event. Yeah, yeah. And I'm excited about it. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about the event because I know it's going to be great. Yeah. And I think going into the mental health field. That's my, my major is uh, psychology, so I'm already in the mental health field, but this is my first time yeah. crossing that line from being a cosmetologist to soon to be a psychologist. Yeah. So right, this I'm in my passion, I'm in my circle of what I wanna do, but to be able to build it and not only just have it here in Baltimore, but right. take it to Maryland, DC, Virginia, yeah. um, even across, you know, the country, that's my goal right. in the next few years is to be able to be worldwide with my, my brand. Yeah, that's a really good brand. idea. And people like tangible things. Yeah. So that's another thing about, that's why I said maybe YouTube or Facebook, people need tangible things. People need to say, okay, so what, what can I watch that you did? If you have something where you're doing a brief speech or even like a, even like a clip from some, something that you do at that event, it doesn't even have to be the whole thing. Just a little clip of maybe a point that you thought was really important that you wanted to share. Put that online. Yeah. And people, uh, people as far as going about that, what I learned from doing Street Webmastered, it's really important to write everything down and set timelines for yourself, set goals for yourself. Say, this is what I want to do within two years or six months. Put those things down on paper, look at it constantly, and then also make a timeline. So when you hit those goals, Put it on that timeline, and you can look at it and feel good about what you did. So you know you you, you are making process uh, progress. I I do that all the time, and like on my, on my list last year, starting the podcast was one of those things. And um, you know doing a lot of events six months later, so it, it definitely helps. Anybody else have anything that they 
They're thinking about doing? We did that out of uh, Baltimore. We cruised out of Miami, VWI, mm -hmm. and uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. you know, people that went to school together. Oh, wow. Everybody, when they see you, they say, hey, what you doing? Where you going on vacation next year? <laughs> <laughs> you get a group together, and nobody reneged because they didn't have any money. Right, right, right. No disappointments. Good. Oh, yeah. We did it all the time. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Networking is important. I mean, you're in your 20s, you're early 20s, you don't have a, a <laughs> yeah. you don't have money. I mean, double occupancy is cheaper than single occupancy. Right, right, right. So that's how you do get a bunch of people. Gotcha. They want to know, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, any, any creatives in the, in the audience that want to share what they do? Or? Hey, how you doing? All right, what's going on, brother? <laughs> service where you can come in, make a quality product and get it out where you don't have to take all the pitfalls that we took to get to where <laughs> we're at. You know, so sourcing, getting manufacturing, domestic and international, um, graphic design, different, you know, different, um, I do, I go to a lot of trade shows so I can see some of the newer design options that are available and, um, you know, cool. building my brand, it helps other people build their brand and, you know, like you said, networking and just helping everybody out. Cool. Definitely. Thanks for sharing that, man. We got to get your car before you get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So we actually, I mean, if you don't mind, <laughs> we, have, we have one of our, our past guests here. So this is this is Brian. Get up, man. T t tell him what you do. What's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Brian Jazz. I'm an artist out of Baltimore. I've um, been in Baltimore all my life. Uh, um, I went to Korea, where I'm from. I taught English for two and a half years. I came back. Um, didn't know what I was going to do with art. I actually went to Carver Center for Arts and Technology up in Baltimore County. Grew up there in the city, so I can go there. Uh, I did like. Events or just like art classes at the Farmer School of Arts, Twigs program as well too. So I, my parents always supported me with that. I'm blessed to have that. But uh, ever since I came back, um, I had a vision, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with my art. But uh, I, I was blessed to actually get to work for some Baltimore Ravens players. I did like five things for uh, one's uh, home gym, Eugene Monroe for the Baltimore Ravens. He doesn't play for them anymore, but now basically became my big bro, so now I'm doing stuff with him. Um, actually talking to Skrull Subs right now, so I'm gonna do like three paintings for him as well too. Um, since he's like coming back, so doing something like the Terminator, cause you know, he, he keeps on coming back. So <laughs> um, I actually just found out that uh, um, this one dude I was on FaceTime with Eugene, he went down to uh, Cambridge, Maryland to see some of his business, what he's getting into, and I didn't know, but I just uh, talked to one of Steve Smith's best friends and Jay Cole's best friend. <laughs> I'm going to LA next month, but um, I also like to get back to the youth. So um, Eugene Monroe, his wife, owns a food truck. So we go down to Penn North by like, every month, and we give out free food to the kids down there. And I give them out like free stickers and just like you know, since they are canceling uh, art programs, that's like I want to at least try to do something. And, you never know, we might have Vanessa Kyle, so we might have that Vanessa Michael Jackson, but you never know if we won't give them a chance, right? So, right, right. Um, well, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, anybody have any other questions? Any questions? Well, thank you so much for sticking around. Um, we have... We have some, some stuff in the back if you want to check it out, if you want a, a, a postcard for the podcast so you can see where you can listen to it at. I um, also bought some stuff from Deborah Dan Material. Uh, have some postcards from that. Uh, wearing the shirt that we designed for the podcast. It's available online if you want to pre-order it. 
um, and some stuff that if you wanted to get today, it's back there as well. So you can check that out on your way out. Um, uh, online, you can check us out, debonairmaterial.com. Branded Podcast, B-R-N-D-D Podcast on pretty much all the platforms. You can look us up as well as Debonair Material on all the platforms. And where can they find out about you, Ron? Um, my name is Who Is Ron James on Twitter and Instagram. I need to, I need to have a website at some point in my life. But social media is the way that I've been communicating with people. I'll put, right. I'll put a flyer up on Instagram and have five, six people show up that saw the flyer and it's kind of been growing since then, so which is really cool. So uh, who is Ron James on Twitter and Instagram? And any uh, live shows coming up? Uh, um, my, my practice ground in general is Sidebar Mondays um, on Lexington, I think it's East Lexington. Near the courthouse. Exactly, exactly. So um, there's, it's a punk bar, like a rock bar, every other day except for Monday. And uh, the comedy starts at 8.30. Um, it's, in, it's kind of incredible. You're seeing people going up for the first time, people that are kind of vets, they get paid. We're all kind of in one space trying comedy. So if you want to see free comedy, uh, every Monday, sidebar, um, that's, that's where I pretty much work on my stuff so yeah cool but yeah i think that's it i appreciate everybody coming out some familiar faces that i invited out thank you for coming out thank you so um, much and that's it. thank you